Hey guys, how you doing? It's Craig Campbell, and uh, here's another installment of the 1956 uh, Common Set. And this name may be a little bit more familiar to some of you. Uh, Whitey Lockman, uh, here with the uh, New York Giants. And a nice card showing him at first base with a runner trying to leg out a, a single. Looks like he's got the ball in his glove as he's kind of looking back at the player. You can see his foot on the bag. And uh, Whitey Lockman. And this is card number... 205, Carol Walter Lockman. And, uh, again, this name may be a little bit familiar to some of you. I'll read the uh, biography of him here. Uh, most baseball fans are aware of the shot heard around the world. Bobby Thompson's dramatic ninth inning home run off Rel Branca that won the 1951 pennant for the New York Giants. But few may recognize Whitey Lockman's role in setting the stage for that climactic event. Had Lockman not made a crucial hit before Thompson came to the plate, the Staten Island Scott would not have faced Branca, nor would a homer have been sufficient to win the game for the Giants. Lockman was signed after the 11th grade. He didn't finish uh, 12th grade, but he graduated at the age of 16 in 1943. And he was signed to the New York Giants in May of that year for a $1,000 signing bonus. Lockman later told an interviewer, that doesn't seem like much money in comparison to what kids are getting now, but it was a lot of money to me back then, and I was very happy about it. Lockman joined the Merchant Marine, closed towards the end of World War II, and he returned to baseball at the start of the 1945 season. And in mid-season, he was called up to the big club. Lockman was a 6'1", 175-pound outfielder who batted left and threw right, and he made his major league debut for the Giants at the Polo Grounds on July 5th of 1945 at the age of 18. And what a debut it was. Batting third in the lineup against the St. Louis Cardinals, Lockman came up to bat in the first inning against George Dawkins with one man on and one man out. He promptly hit a home run a two-run homer in his first major league plate appearance. In the fourth inning of that game, he clouded a two-run double. For his inaugural day, Lockman went two for four with four RBIs. After this start, Lockman spent his entire playing career in the major leagues. He never played another game in the minors. Although he only appeared in 32 games before enlisting in the Army on August 10th, he started in center field in every Giants game from his debut to his enlistment. enlistment. Mel Ott was Lockman's manager for only a few weeks, but years later, Lockman credited Ott with being a positive influence on his life and his career. The manager took the scared teenager under his wing and bolstered his confidence, taught him to be a better hitter, and helped the youngster adjust to life in the big city. Lockman served as a technical sergeant aboard a Navy transport ferrying across the Pacific. He missed the entire 1946 season and was discharged from the service just in time to join the Giants for spring training in 47. With Lockman on first base in an exhibition game against the Cleveland Indians, Clint Harting hit a slow roller to the Cleveland shortstop, Lou Berdu. I had a great jump, and I never thought he would try to make a play on me, Lockman said. I was coming into second base standing up, but Lou fooled me. Just as he caught the ball, he rolled around and flipped it to second. I started to slide, but it was too late. I was too close to the base. My spike stuck in the bag, and I could feel my ankle snap. Lockman was carried off the field with a broken ankle. He spent six weeks in the hospital with his leg in a cast, and then recuperated at home. It was late summer before he rejoined the club, but even then his ankle was too weak for him to play in the outfield. He appeared in only two games in that final week of the season, both times as a pinch hitter. Now, in addition to outfielders Monty Irvin and Willie Mays in the lineup, Lockman became the Giants' first baseman. In that legendary playoff game, October 3, 1951, he was playing first base, and he batted fifth in the lineup. As most baseball fans know, the Giants had come far behind the Dodgers the last day of the season, and the two Cubs had split the first two games of the best two out of three playoff series. Going to the last half of the ninth inning of the pennant deciding game, the Dodgers had a 4-1 to lead. Alvin Dark led off the Giants with a single. Don Mueller followed with a single to put runners at first and third. Monty Irvin hit a foul fly for the first out, and then Lockman came up and hit a line drive double just inside the left field line, scoring Alvin Dark. 
and sending Mueller to third. Mueller injured his ankle as he arrived at the base, and Clint Hartung came in to run for Mueller. Lockman's hit had made the score 4-2, to two, putting the potential tying runs on base. It knocked Newcomb out of the game, and in came Ralph Branca to pitch to Thompson, which would not have happened had Lockman not reached base. Not only was he the tying run, but he would not have been on base, nor would Thompson have scored the winning run, if not for Lockman's safety. Lockman had set the stage, and Thompson delivered perhaps the most famous home run in the history of baseball. After 1951, Lockman played nine more seasons in the major leagues, his best year in 1952 when he hit 290 and scored 99 runs and was named to the All-Star team. From 52 to 55, he was a solid performer for the Giants, averaging 150 games a season. In 1956, he was traded to the St. Louis Cardinals with many other players. And he only stayed a short time with the Cardinals and returned back to the Giants in a trade for Hoyt Wilhelm. He was with the Giants when they moved to San Francisco in 1958. In 1959, the Baltimore Orioles purchased him and then traded him to Cincinnati. He ended his playing career with the Reds on June 24, 1960, at the age of 33. With the Reds trailing San Francisco in 5-2 in the ninth inning, Dutch Doter led off the bottom of the frame with a walk. Manager Fred Hutchinson sent Lockman in to run for a slow-footed catcher. Lockman went to third in a single and scored as Jerry Lynch into a double play, making the score 5-3. The Reds then lost the game when Ed Bailey lifted a fly up to the shortstop. It was not a great ending to a long and distinguishing major league career, but Lockman had done all his manager had asked him to do. His playing career was over, but Lockman stayed in baseball for many years. He finally retired in 2001 at the age of 75. He was a coach on the Red Staff from 61 through 64, and then he was a manager of the Chicago Cubs, uh, taking over for uh, Leo de Rocher in 1972. He succeeded his one-time manager, and then he was uh, fired in the mid-season of 1974. He stayed on as a general manager of the Cubs until 1975, and he worked as player development until 1989. Whitey Lockman finished with a 279 average, 114 home runs with 563 RBIs. As a manager, his record was 157 wins, 162 losses. He was an All-Star in 52 and a World Series champ in 1954. And so here we have Whitey Lockman, a man who played many, many games. His rookie card is a 1948 Bowman. This 1956 tops is his first regular issue. And his last issue was 1960 as a player. And in 1973, he has a card as a manager of the Cubs in the 1973 Tops. And so this is a look at Whitey Lockman from the 1956 Tops. I hope you enjoy the video. Have a good night.